Okay. Uh, so this is Mason Moody, self hosted WordPress. Uh, I am leading the session, Will Reynolds Young, but I encourage you to ask questions and hopefully I can answer them. If not, I'll make up a really awesome sounding answer. And maybe even it'll be right, so that'll be good. Um, my company is called Worry Free Technologies. Uh, I do a little bit of everything from helping people with their computer setups to home theater setups to with their websites. So, um, I also work with a skincare company as well as the chief digital officer. Um, basically, I just break the website and fix it, and hopefully it ends up fixing it. Um, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at WReynoldsYoung, so you can tweet insulting things at me, and then I'll read them later. Um, so I want to know from you guys how familiar you are with WordPress at this point. Um, how many of you guys already have a WordPress site, whether it's self-hosted or um, not self-hosted? Okay, I know one's lying in the back. <laughs> uh, so, how many of you guys own a small business for your WordPress site, or is it personal? Uh, which way does it go? Both. Okay, both is always good. No layer? Uh, well, it's not my site. It's oh. somebody else is going to do it for them. That's personal. Good. Good. So personal, but you're helping someone else. Okay. The guys. The mix. Okay. Anyone else want to share? Okay. I always like to get a feel of the room. It's more fun that way because you know, it can be very flexible. Um, so these are the differences here between WordPress.com, uh, the free solution, or self-hosted WordPress, which is rather affordable, uh, but still not free. Uh, people like the word free, but when you really get into using WordPress or any platform for your business or personal and you want to be serious about it, you should really be expected to be paying money, especially if you intend to make money. Um, and actually on WordPress.com, you can't use it for profit, so don't try. They won't like it. Um, so I don't want to go spend too much time on this. really easy to see. Free for WordPress.com, self-hosted WordPress, self-hosted, um, and you pay for the hosting because of that. That's where it comes into the pay. Um, Usually very affordable, $5 a month, $3 a month. You can easily spend hundreds of dollars a month if you feel the need to. Um, on WordPress.com, a big difference. So you have ads on WordPress.com, where on self-hosted WordPress, the only ads that you would see there are if you're using free hosting, which I would not recommend, or ads that you place yourself. Um, so a big, big advantage there, because you don't need to worry about your content showing up to ads, especially if you're trying to build brand yourself whether it be personal or business. Um, on WordPress.com, you have a very limited selection of theme options. And on self-hosted WordPress, you have nearly an unlimited selection of theme choices that you could spend forever literally choosing a theme. It's a very difficult process, actually. You really try and spend way too much time on it. Um, with WordPress.com, limited customization, self-hosted WordPress, Endless customization. You can change coding, everything. You can really, really get into it and dive into it. A lot of major sites are run on WordPress on the back end. Um, as I said already, you can't use WordPress.com for profit uh, with self-hosted WordPress. Very few restrictions. You are like technically licensing the WordPress software, so there still is an end use for license agreement. Um, kudos if you actually read it, but if you're posting something that you wouldn't want your grandma to see, then you might want to read the agreement because it might not be there, something that you can do. Um, and then finally, this is a big thing here. Um, with WordPress.com, it includes a bunch of security features and spam features. And with self-hosted WordPress, there are none built in. So that's up to you. And that's a very important thing that we're going to talk about during this presentation because when you switch, that is extremely important to make sure that your site is safe um, and that it's not going to get hacked and that you have your content. The other thing is, is that with WordPress.com, you know, you have their backbone, meaning if they're hosting, where with the self-hosted WordPress, you're working on your own hosting. So you need to make a really educated and informed choice about who you're choosing to host your site. And we'll talk about that as well. Any questions so far? Um, so first we'll talk about hosting. 
I kind of went back and forth on the order that I was going to do this, because we're going to talk about hosting, we're going to talk about themes, we're going to talk about plugins, and they're all very important, and you kind of want to think about them all at once in many ways, because they go hand in hand a lot of ways. Uh, so hosting. Uh, you can see all the options up here. Obviously, there's way more hosting companies than this. GoDaddy has been my choice for many, many years. Um, some people will tell you that they don't like their customer service. They've made questionable business decisions. Um, I've just used them for so long that it's a pain for me to move. I have like 20 plus sites hosted there. I've, I've had problems. I think you're going to have that anywhere. you got to work through them. Um, they, you can always, always find sales for GoDaddy. That's a big thing. So right now they're actually running a sale of $3.99 a month. Um, and then after that, it goes to $7.99 a month. But literally, you can always find a coupon code. Feel free to go look for one. Um, Tubu is a local company uh, on a major platform's backbone, uh, and it's owned by someone who has attended PodCamp and helped with PodCamp many years. Uh, $6.99 a month uh, for a three-month commitment at a time. With GoDaddy, you can go month by month. You can do yearly, all kinds of options. Site 5. This one is something that I've never personally used, but I see it recommended over and over and over and over again. Um, they have green hosting. They're said to have excellent customer care, and actually just last night I hopped onto their customer care to ask a few questions to make sure I understood um, everything that I talked to with friends about to make sure it was correct, and uh, they were excellent. I was like, I'm doing a presentation tomorrow. I want to include you guys, and they were like, oh, I'm sorry to hear it's tomorrow. We would have sent you some swag. Blah, blah, blah. So really, really upcoming. Sorry we didn't get any swag. Um, you should work on that. What do you mean by green hosting? What was that? They run on uh, solar. Uh, so eco-friendly. Uh, and then the last one here, by far the most expensive option, is WP Engine. And they have dedicated WordPress hosting. That's all they do. Uh, they're extremely good at what they do. But it's a hard pill to swallow paying $29 a month. And truthfully, if you spend enough time and you really put your mind to it, you can get what they have with any of these other platforms. It's just that's kind of the easy way out if you want to throw money at the situation and get rid of it. Any questions about hosting at this point? Any hosts you were thinking about I could try and answer a question about? Okay. So next we're going to talk about domain. So in many ways, domains and hosting are together. But in other ways, they're separate. So you'll see a bunch of the same sites up here, and you'll see maybe a different site or two. Um, and so with domains, you know, you want to have a domain for your site. So mine is wry.me at willrealmtm.com. I have an endless amount of domains, one that I could ever think of. Uh, again, I use GoDaddy for my domains. You can have your domain anywhere. You can have your hosting a different place. You can have them at the same place. If you can, I would recommend having it at the same place. It just makes things easier, but it doesn't need to be that way. Uh, so again, you have domains up here. You have GoDaddy. You have Tubu, Site5, Namecheap, and Hover. And so GoDaddy, uh, again, my choice for domains. Uh, what you have here in the parentheses on the side is something that's really important when it comes to domains. Um, when you register your domain, uh, there's who is information on the domain. So I can just look up anyone's domain in here, and it'll tell me who owns the domain. It'll tell me the address that you registered with. Uh, it'll tell me where you host at. It'll tell me a bunch of different things. So what I would always recommend is all of these sites offer who is privacy in a way, meaning a third party um, is their name up on there, and then they forward any contact information to you. That way that your name is not out there. Um, personally... I'm going to show you real quick here. Um, I don't really want to put anyone on the spot, so I'm going to use my own domain. Uh, just give you an example of what I'm talking about here and why you're going to want to shell out for this. It's going to give me a code. i got to pretend to know what that says. So here you go. There's my domain. It shows you all kinds of information about me. You can call me, you can text me, you know, whatever you want to do. So I personally have a mailbox for my domains. Um, I've had do I have so many domains that they're all registered under that. If you already have a post office box or something, that's 
very acceptable and you do not need to use who is protection. Other than that, highly recommend who is protection. If you have an office address, you can use something that's not your home. Um, so here you can see it, it lists abuse contacts and resellers and all kinds of information you never want to know about my domain. Um, it shows my name, address, phone number, email. Um, as you go down, it shows where my name servers are, where my domain is hosted at, all kinds of good stuff. And then there's different contacts for tech, administrative, etc. So, at each of these different places, some of them have it for free to get the Whois protection, and some of them you have to pay. So GoDaddy, it costs $7.99 a year. Tubu, $1.95 a year, then $7.95 a year. On and on. Site 5, that was one of the questions I asked them. It's $12 a year. Namecheap and Hover have it for free, included with all domain purchases. And those are all .com domains. Those are .com domains, yes. Um, obviously, it's going to be different, perhaps. Usually, it's not different, depending on the domain, for the Whois protection. And it's, I'm glad that you said that, because on some domains, you're not allowed to have Whois protection, um, especially with certain country codes and stuff. Um, so that's you know, something to think about as well. The .orgs and .tv and some of those other fancy yeah. top-level domains are more expensive. Yes. Yes, you're correct. Um, I think most people are going to try and stick the .com and .net. I, honestly, at this point, I don't... I mean, I'd ask you to. Do you think it, it matters at this point what the extension is? So, yeah. I don't, and there's I'm, so many new ones coming out. Right, right. You know, Chris Brogan's at owner.media. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah no kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't, I mean, at this point, I don't think the extension matters, so .com, .net. Um, .com is obviously the most common at this point still, and a lot of times people are just going to still think if you say something, it's going to be .com, but I think a lot of people at this point are understanding that .com isn't the only thing out there. Yeah. I have a .me domain, and that's where all my email is hosted to that, too, so like I say, five years ago when I sent it to someone on the phone, they're like dot me. I'm like, yes, dot me. And some sites actually don't even accept it. They say it's not a valid email. It's hilarious. Um, but I mean, not that big of a deal. Any questions about who is protection or anything like that with domains? Okay. I'm going to go back to something on domains momentarily called DNS records if we have time. But I don't want to run out of time. Uh, so, themes. There are a billion places, like I said, to get a theme. I don't really have a preferred place at this point. I just go with what works. Um, there are theme clubs where you can pay like $79 a year and you get unlimited themes from them. If you're having one site, it's probably not that good of an idea. You're going to probably keep the same, same theme for at least a year plus. Um, so usually I go one-time purchases. There's free themes. There's themes that are $50. There's themes that are $100. I mean, you can go the whole gamut and range. And truthfully to me, finding a theme that I want is the most difficult part. Um, because you want to get something that matches what you want and that you're going to have to do the least customization to. But you also want a theme from a company that's reputable and that's going to be secure. And you also want a theme that's not going to cost you like a billion dollars. The coolest thing about selecting a theme is that you can get a full preview of the theme, and a lot of times you can even log in and see the back end of the theme, you can play around with it. Usually you can't get like a demo copy or anything, but they'll allow you to have it for like 30 days and get a money back guarantee or whatever, uh, which I don't think anyone ever uses. But um, there's a lot of you know different ways you can look at themes, and what I go for is I look at the design that I want, and the colors that I want, that way I have to change the least things about the theme. Um, so places that I like for themes, certainly not an unlimited list. Um, Rocket theme, Elegant themes, and Theme Forest all have really, really great themes, really great support through them. They have themes sold directly through developers, so allowing them to earn a living on that. And um, they rate the themes as well. You can get endless information there about the theme as well. All of these places, pretty much every theme is going to have a demo where you can see what it looks like. You can play around with it. And many of them, again, as I said, you can log in to the back end and play with it. Um, 
An interesting thought with themes is you usually think of WordPress and you usually just think of themes. But there's these things called frameworks. And frameworks are extremely powerful for WordPress. Personally, I don't use any of them at this point. I've toyed around with lots of them. Um, but I kind of keep my sites really simple. Um, and if I'm throwing up a complicated site, I'm probably using something else because I'm much more of an advanced developer. Uh, but frameworks can be really, really great because some of them will have like drag and drop interfaces built in. Another thing that's really cool about frameworks is sometimes you can easily change between themes and not like lose features. So like frameworks will have things built in that you would be buying plugins or getting plugins otherwise. So for example, some things that I'll talk about later are like login limits. So saying that you can't log into the site so many times and get failed attempts. Or something more simple, like it'll have a social sharing aspect built in. Um, there's a lot of other things that you can do with frameworks, and I mentioned a bunch of them up here. Genesis, Gantry, Divi, and Ultimatum. And I've probably worked with Genesis and Gantry the most. Uh, I'd say that Gantry is probably the most popular. I don't know if that's your experience as well. Me two guys. Really? Oh, wow. I'm a Divi guy. Oh, wow. Okay. Maybe I'm, I do. Have, I mean, I have used a lot of other things, but I now I, I, do, I, don't do, I don't do a website without Divi. Okay. That's crazy. I had not even heard of Divi until a couple of weeks ago when I was going through like researching and updating everything. So that's crazy. That's cool. Um, I know that Elegant Themes is really great products. They're probably one of the first sites I go to, and then Rocket Theme is the second. A lot of times I'm just looking at what other people are using. You know, like, oh, I kind of like that theme. What are they using? Usually you can find that information in the footer of their page, so going all the way to the bottom. If not, you can just send me an email, and it will take me all about 30 seconds to tell you if that. probably spend more time reading the email and being like, ah, oh, crap. Let me just do this real quick. Um, See if there was anything else I wanted to say. I'm reading notes from this screen and looking at the presentation from this screen. And the notes are in like 12 point font, so it's great. Um, oh, so the interesting part about frameworks, like you had mentioned, you basically just use that framework. So, again, kind of with choosing themes, if you do choose a framework, you're probably going to stick within that because each different framework is going to have its own learning curve. And each theme has its own learning curve as well. So that's a very rough part about WordPress, I guess I'd say. It's, uh, it's something that you can customize endlessly, and there's a lot of things that are the same across WordPress sites and similar um, interfaces that you're working with, but each theme and each framework is going to have its own way of working. But if you stay inside the same framework all the time, like this gentleman does, then you're going to be set to go because each one's going to work off that framework and it's going to be very easy to work with inside there and change things because all of those themes are then going to work with that framework and have a similar layout in the way that you change things. So the exciting part is migration. With my great image there that I got going on. So despite my dreaded dun da da the reason you came here for migration. Migration is like insanely simple. It's almost too simple that you think it did something wrong. So we're going to exit here. And so I have my WordPress.com site here, the dashboard that you should be familiar with. Um, I'll show you the other dashboard as well. But literally built in here on the side, you can scroll down. Go to settings, right here. Go to this little export button. Just literally hit export, and then you export all your content. It's a little crazy, insane, easy. So you can even choose specifically what you want to export and not. So here's where it gets a little interesting, because when you export all of your content, you're also exporting the theme that's built in, you're exporting the posts, you're exporting everything about it. Uh, the difficult part that comes in with this is that each team treats things differently, so you are going to go have in and have to tweak after the fact. So inside, perhaps a more or less familiar, I don't know, the WordPress admin, rather than WordPress's simplified one, 
we have the same thing. tools over here. So tools and then export. And this is where it gets really exciting because a lot of website hosts, some of them include transfer for free. They'll migrate you for free. You can easily pay someone to do it at a pretty nominal fee because it's not a very difficult thing to do. Um, here they're, they're charging $129 for a guided transfer, which you can easily find. Plenty of people will help you with it for less than that. Um, as I had mentioned, the most difficult part of it is that themes treat things differently. So you're probably going to have to go in and look at like a post page, or going to have to look at a regular page, and see if they display correctly on this new theme. And these are things that you're going to want to do before you think about launching your site live. You're going to need to give yourself time. Um, because it's, it's possible... Uh, I don't want to say that this process is flawless, it's technology, so the only certain thing is that it's going to fail at some point. It's just when it's going to fail. Um, so you have to go inside there and look through your site, pretend like you're a user, maybe have a friend go through and say, hey, is there anything that looks wrong here? You say you look at your site, but what if you just have a couple of different browsers and a couple of different computers and there's you know, lots of variety out there? For the last 20 years or whatever. Yeah, so you, you could definitely kill yourself looking at your site on every single browser and every single computer. Um, that's unfortunately what I do at this point. Uh, there's a site called Browser Shots that will do it for you for free with tons and tons and tons more than you could ever think of different types of browsers. But for you guys, I would focus on the core. So I would focus on Chrome, Internet Explorer, in Safari, and then whatever Microsoft calls their new browser, what do they call it? What's Microsoft's new browser? Whatever they call it, who cares? <laughs> I'm sure it's terrible. Uh, <laughs> it's got to be better than your Explorer. Yeah. yeah, I just encountered it myself. I can't even remember. It was like a head slap or yeah. a face slap. What is it? I don't even know. Whatever they call it. Um, so browser shots will allow you to see that. The other thing that I love to do is I like to hit up my friends and be like, hey, will you look at this and give me some feedback? Does this look weird? Does that look weird? Um, and that's always a really great way because your set of eyes is going to get really tired in this process of looking at your same site. Personally, I go crazy looking at our site because I just see things that I want to fix and change everywhere. So definitely use your friends, your family. You know, just stop random people on the side of the street and say, hey, does this look okay? Um, so another thing inside this process with themes is that, do you guys know what responsive means? Have you heard the word responsive in terms of a theme before? Is that spinning heads? Okay, I'm getting like some yes and some no, so that's, that's good. We're, we're in good places here. Um, so responsive means essentially that the, the site is going to change based on the screen, but looks similar. And when you're looking for themes, this is something you definitely want to write down. You want a theme that is responsive. If you don't buy a theme that is responsive, you've done yourself a huge disservice. Um, responsive themes mean that it's going to work on your mobile device, it's going to work on your tablet, it's going to work on your laptop, it's going to work on my big 27-inch monitor at home, it's going to work on a TV, and it's all going to look relatively similar and adjust well to the screen size. Extremely, extremely important. What this does throw in there is on your WordPress.com site, there's different ways of re rendering a responsive site. So your theme might do it in a different way, and that can kind of throw up some problems. So this, this throws in the issue, especially when it comes to pictures on your site, because pictures aren't responsive right off the bat. They have to be specially made for web. They, it's, it's kind of a process, unfortunately. You can't just post it in your image. So if you have a lot of pictures there, you definitely need to look at them on your phone, an iPad, a you know, Samsung Galaxy tablet. Look how they look, because you might have like this huge, beautiful picture that covers the screen, but then that huge, beautiful picture on your mobile site is going to cover that same size on the little mobile device. So then your tech will be like that. Um, luckily, the internet has solutions for you. 
I don't want to spend too much time on that. Um, that's the best part. There's a huge community of WordPress users that have just written guides upon guides upon guides to help you with this process. And unfortunately, it is kind of a long process, but it is a very simple process at this point through the help of the community and the posts that have been written already. Um, so don't fret too much. In the worst comes to worst, you decide it doesn't work out for you, you can always go back. You haven't lost your site. You still have it there. It can just be a fun adventure. Oh, so I was going to show you. So here is my already going WordPress site. But in the same spot where it had export, it has import. Ironically, it makes it very simple. And you will have downloaded this exported file to your computer. It will be a zip. Don't open it. Just leave it be. Um, and then you literally just upload that exact same file to your WordPress site. You might find accidentally that you broke the site. Something might happen. Don't fret. There's always an easy way to go back. It's not that big of a deal. It might happen. Um, and then you have to go through those steps of making sure that everything looks good. And then you can... I would recommend going to your new theme after rather than before right away because when you bring in your whole exported stuff, it's going to have the theme already in there um, rather than just bringing in individual parts. I find it easier that way. Mileage will obviously vary and opinions are going to vary greatly. So in that same tool spot, import, export, Got it all good to go there. So, a weird thing going back here is that you're like, well, I have this new awesome hosting from Site 5. How do I get WordPress on there? Like, it doesn't just appear all of a sudden, unfortunately. It would be great if you could, like, snap your fingers. Um, so, every single one of those hosting platforms that I had mentioned actually has a one click install where you click a button. You tell it what you want your username and password to be, and then it just, poof, WordPress appears. It's like the most fantastic thing ever. You don't have to like move files anywhere. You don't have to set up databases. It does it all for you automatically. And I, I think you would be hard-pressed to find if you don't use one of those hosting services. There's plenty of other others out there that they won't have that one-click install. Um, you can certainly do it the manual way if you want. I really don't know why you would. I personally don't know any reason you would, but... Um, but someone might want to do it for fun, I don't know. This is my favorite topic that I may spend the most of the time on. Very important. So I had mentioned the differences between WordPress.com and self-hosted WordPress is that built-in security for WordPress.com. And where self-hosted WordPress is all up to you. You're like the gatekeeper. Um, unfortunately, there is no magic like dust or candy that you can use to just protect your site. It's it's uh, it's some work. Uh, I'm not going to lie there. Um, so I brought you guys some of the magic candy that you can chomp on while you are uh, securing a WordPress site. So I'm going to get it out of this bag. You can choose a nice hard rock candy here. Uh, to secure your site with. You can chomp on it while you're trying to think about all the security here. You got all kinds of flavors going on there. I'm going to let you guys just pass it back and around. But I can tang the peach things up here. <laughs> so, we have a bunch of different plugins and things that will help you and tips and tricks. You can find an endless amount. You can spend the rest of your life probably securing your WordPress site. I'm going to try and give you the tips that I would go to, the tips that I use, but you can keep going endlessly, and I'm going to give you a blog post that will just blow your mind on things that I didn't even think of in the first thought, unfortunately. Uh, so the huge thing that I would recommend is WordPress. It's owned by the company who created WordPress, and it is fantastic, literally fantastic. Um, it does come at a cost, but I say that this cost is 110% worth it by far. Um, so I list up here, it's $99 a year for a single site for security and backup, and then $55 a year for backup only. 
Um, going to recommend, obviously, the, the better option here. There's higher, there's another plan as well. Um, it gives you, on the other plan, it gives you like real-time backup, so it's constant. It gives you real-time monitoring of your site. This one here is going to look at your site once a day. It's going to back it up once a day. Um, if you do run into a problem, you accidentally do something wrong, you hit the wrong button, you go to their site, you hit restore, and then it's just, poof, it's all back to as it was the day before. At worst, you're going to lose maybe a post or some edits that you did. At best, you're going to be able to chomp on some more candy instead. Um, so there are some other plugins that you can use. Back, WP Up. Um, it is a free plugin. There's an endless amount of plugins that you can use to back up. That's just the one I happen to use. Um, again, mileage may vary. There are a billion options. And you could spend your days looking at all of them. Um, and then bulletproof security. Bulletproof security is something I'd recommend even if you have bulk press. Um, I'm going to read off the screen because I can't even begin to fathom all the things that it does for you. Um, so it takes care of a lot of things. It has a firewall. It has database security. It has login security. It has a really, really simple four-click interface, so it's foolproof in many ways. Um, and it's really just generally going to take care of your website. I mean, a really important thing here with security is limiting login attempts. So if I go to your site and I go to your WP-admin panel and I look at it and I just keep trying things, then I'm probably going to get it eventually. Like if I can just endlessly try. This plugin, what it will do is it will say, you can say three login attempts and you're locked out for five minutes, just like your iPhone or your Android device, it will lock you out eventually and then the time can get exponentially longer, it can be the same, but then you can also get a notification personally uh, that this is happening and then just, you know, turn off the page. Um, huge, huge thing here. Please do not use the username administrator, admin, or anything similar to that. Your username should be unique to this service because if you know the username already, um, then that's one of the two things there already. Um, with the password, which we'll talk about, don't make it something you used before. This is literally the key to your site, and getting it back is not going to be a fun time if you don't have that. You do have that fallback of your backup, but you'll have a backup of it elsewhere, but you still got to reinstall your site. They might get a hold of your hosting. It could just be a big problem. So making these simple steps ahead of time really can save you a lot of headache in the end. Um, so that Bulletproof Security also has a pro version as well as many of these things do. If you want to shell out the money for it, it's great, but the bare bones free thing that they have is just fantastic. I, I use it. I, I can vouch for that. You use the free version? Yeah, I use the free version. Okay. Um, yeah, it's... I mean, those four screens, just like so simple. Like, you feel like you're not doing enough in many ways. This is just simple. It's, and I don't want to say it's set and forget because you do have to set it up. You do get notifications if someone tries, but you occasionally have to reset things up after they do an upgrade. Right, right. But that's, it's been very simple. Yeah. So, security tips. Um, as I mentioned, please, 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 if you learned one thing here today, do not use admin, do not use administrator, and really just don't ever use that anywhere, not even just WordPress. And it's really great if you have different usernames in different places. I know that's a lot easier said than done. Done. Yeah, said than done. Um, password, make it unique. I use something called LastPass, which allows me to log in to any computer and just look at LastPass, and now I have all my passwords. This is not my computer. Thank you very much for saving the day. Um, and I have all my passwords on here right now. I'll just log out and she won't have access to them. Um, and I have access to my mobile device for only $12 a year. And then I have unique passwords everywhere. I just have one really difficult password that I remember. And I could not even tell you my other passwords because they are insane. Um, it is the best tool of all time. Uh, it changes my life because I have so many logins. There's other ones. There's one password. It looks a lot nicer than one pass. Also, Costs more depending on how often you upgrade. There's key pass or key pass. 
I really don't know how you pronounce it. I use it on my use it. Yeah, I've, okay. been, I've used it yeah. in for work for a lot of years. Yeah. Um, it runs on Windows. Yeah. I, if I if, if I remember right, all of these have Windows versions and Mac versions and mobile versions for Android and Apple devices. I hope you don't own a Windows device because you're just not going to work out in life at this point. Um, I think all of them have three of Linux versions, too. I don't think you're going to use Linux, but I think they do. Um, some of them will allow you to keep the database offline. If you want to be extremely security conscious, that's a great idea that way. There's no access online. Um, my motto is, I'm going to get hacked eventually. It's just how prepared I am, basically. Um, so, you know, just do the best I can. Uh, huge thing, again, theme and plugins. Keep them up to date. Luckily, WordPress has brought in an automatic update. It can kind of screw you sometimes because it might break something on your site. I haven't really seen that much, but it's a concern of mine. I have them all on my site. It's a rather simple site for my blog. But if you do start customizing a lot of things, which I don't recommend, actually, um, then you might have problems when you update plugins but or your theme. Um, these updates legitimately will happen just as often as updates to your apps on your phone. You can see multiple updates a week depending on how many uh, plugins you use. So keep an eye out. If WordPress does automatically update for you, which you can turn off, I recommend keeping it on. It's just an easy set for your way. It sends you an email saying it updated. It's kind of like a fun surprise. Oh, look, my WordPress site updated while I was sleeping. When WordPress does update, it does take your site offline for a little bit. It's a very limited amount of time. It's a couple minutes at most. Really not a worry. Your site's going to go down at some time. Just deal with it, basically. Um, don't overload plugins. I am the worst offender at using different plugins and just trying them out and then forgetting to uninstall them or just leaving them there. The more plugins you have, the more possible security holes you have, so make very conscious choices about the plugins that you decide to use. Um, going back, make sure you keep the plugins that you do use up to date. Remove or deactivate plugins that you do not use. I'm going to interject from other plugins. I know it's not about security. There is such a thing as having too much security, so you want to pick a good security plugin and go with it. Yes. Don't feel like your site could be more secure if you run. I think security oh, will yeah. approve plus something else. You're going to have conflicts that are going to affect your site. So Definitely a good tip, for sure. Just like your computer at home, you, you just need to choose one and stick with it. You, adding more just creates more problems. So um, it sounds like the consensus of Serum is bulletproof security is a good one to go with. I mean, you use bulletproof security too, or do you use it? I've heard this every year. So. Oh, jeez. I'm, so, I'm jealous, actually. I'm not sorry, but. The peanut gallery that is watching this live stream Hi. wants me to tell you that the WordPress auto update only updates when a site is visited. Aha. Uh -huh. Important distinction. This is good to know. This is from Bald Fat Guy, at Bald Fat Guy on Twitter. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> he has, he has screen repair services too. He, he, no, he makes t shirts. He makes t shirts, yep. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, that's good to know because I didn't know. That. Yeah, so hopefully people are actually going to your site. That's good to know. There you Maybe go. That's why my site never updates. It's lonely and sad. <laughs> <laughs> Send me the link. I'll just ping it every couple days. Okay. This this <laughs> auto refresh on your computer. It looks like I have tons of visitors. That's right. Um, limit login attempts. Luckily, this is built in with Bulletproof. If you don't use Bulletproof. A lot of the other security plugins have it built in. It's like a thing you should definitely do. Um, there's a plugin called Login Lockdown that does it for you if you don't have it on what you do. Definitely check to make sure you have it. The last thing, which is great to use anywhere, is called two-factor authentication. Uh, quick thing on two-factor authentication, what it means is when you try and log in and it's an unfamiliar place or it's a suspect login, it'll ask you to do something extra. So sometimes it'll send you an email Sometimes it'll send you a text message. Sometimes you have an app on your phone that creates those nice little six-digit codes. Um, personally, I love to use Google Authenticator, and there's a plugin that allows you to do that on your WordPress site. If anything is important to you, which I hope it is, 
you should probably use two-factor authentication. Um, while I'm giving a public service announcement about two-factor authentication, you can use it on your Gmail account, you can use it on your Facebook account. Um, it's a very simple thing to implement and uh, really great. And the only real problems you come in is if you're in an airplane and you need to get a code, and then luckily you have backup codes. Uh, so keep your backup codes with you. Um, so, I can give you a second. This is a really great blog post. Unfortunately, I did not write it, so it's not that good of a plug for me, but I just like it a lot. Um, it's a really great blog post you can find here uh, about WordPress security. It goes through way, way, way more things than I could ever even think of or imagine. You can drive yourself crazy securing your site. If you want to start going through these things and editing like your HD access file or things like that, by all means do it. They have really great tips here. All of them are definitely good to do, but don't stress yourself out over a situation that's maybe not going to happen today or tomorrow or ever. Um, obviously, mileage may vary based on the content of your site. If you run a very controversial site, people are going to be like, hey, let's try and take down the site. If you run like my site where there's almost no content and it just sits there with a static page, then you know maybe you'll be a little better off. But you probably want to put content on your site. And encouraging discussion is good. So. Everyone got that who would like it? Okay. So we've mentioned a lot of plugins at this point. We have gone plugin crazy. We've talked about some already. We've talked about bulletproof security. Um, we've talked about different frameworks that may have plugins already built in that you don't need. This is, again, certainly not an exhaustive list of plugins. They're just plugins that I like, that I use. Don't overload yourself with plugins. You can spend the rest of your life looking at plugins. A new plugin is made every day by for sure. Plugins become defunct, they get deleted. Hopefully, these are all still perfect and checked them all yesterday to make sure they're the ones that I use. So, if they're not, that's probably not good. Um, again, going back to security, the plugins that you use are going to dictate the security that your site has. Because the more plugins, the more security holes, the more possibility to get into your site. Um, if anyone leaves this session as like Will didn't talk enough about security, then you know that'd be a little crazy. But <laughs> <laughs> okay, so WordPress SEO or Yoast, it's kind of like the gold standard, I, I'd say, at this point of SEO. Again, there's a trillion SEO plugins. This allows you to edit things about your posts that are extremely important, um, like keywords and how it will appear in search results. Definitely worth spending your time on, on every single post and every single page, by far. It'll take you five minutes on each page or post to do extra, and it'll benefit you tons in the long run. Um, on that same token, to the not going crazy part, don't try and put in every single word you can think of, because then Google's going to be like, what on earth is this? Um, actually create a nice short description, maybe a preview of the post, something like that. Uh, and then uh, for the keywords, put relevant keywords to what you're actually writing about. Um, there are even some plugins that will rate the SEO of your post and help recommend things. Um, if you can, again, go crazy with SEO. WP Optimize. Um, it is a plugin that uh, helps your site run smoothly. Um, something that I actually forgot about when I was bringing the session, it was kind of just something that happens in the background, is that when you have a website, it creates caches and creates extra things, just like your computer over time. You know, your computer slows down, your phone slows down the more often longer you have it. Same thing with your site. So this plugin is going to kind of help keep your site running smoothly. It's going to remove unneeded things. Um, some people have warned that like it might remove something you need. I haven't seen that at this point. It's not a problem I've run into. Again, if you're using Vault Press and you have a backup every single day, it's not a worry if your site breaks. If you have a backup, which you should have a backup, then you can just revert to the last one. Um, 
Google XML sitemaps. Sounds a little crazy, a lot simpler than you think. Um, it creates a special type of file that you give to Google, and then it shows them how your site is laid out. That's how, in some way, that you get those fancy little things when you search Google that show you previews of pages and different things. It's a very simple thing to do. It takes you minutes, but, like, again, super important. I guess I'm saying everything is super important, but it is. Uh, Google Analytics dashboard. So I mentioned a little bit later about Google Analytics. Uh, it's a great service. You can get a nice dashboard going on. Uh, social image sharing. Again, you might find this already in one of the frameworks. Um, so you might not actually need it if you use a framework. A lot of times it's built into themes already. Um, but you definitely want to have some kind of image sharing in there. The really thing, cool thing I like about this plugin is that, yep, yeah. oh yeah, thank you. Um, it creates a little hover over your picture so you can easily pin your picture or tweet that picture or put it on Facebook. It's a really great thing. Simple Share, another sharing plugin. Even though these two look like the same thing, they are two different types of sharing plugins for your site. Again, you might find them built into your theme or your framework. Discuss or Live Fire. So you have WordPress comments. I just really like these plugins because if I have a Discuss account or Live Fire account, I can log in on any site and easily comment. I have my Karma that I have there. It gives me updates. I personally really don't like the WordPress um, commenting system. I think these guys make it really great, and they do a really good job of keeping your comments spam free, and they create really good discussions. Um, Either one is great. I kind of prefer Discuss. I don't really know why. I just do. I don't really have real reasons. Um, Sumo Me, it creates really easy pop-ups for your site so you can get more email subscribers or other similar things. They have a ton of free tools. They have an amazing blog um, with marketing ideas and stuff. A great team out of Austin, Texas. And then W3 Total Cash. It's similar to, to WP Optimize, but different in ways. Again, this can be like kind of a dangerous thing if you're stacking too many plugins on each other that do the same thing. I very much believe they do different but similar things. So, you know, again, mileage may vary. And the last thing here, uh, tools. So I had already mentioned Google Analytics. You can see more things than you could ever imagine in your life. I still look at Google Analytics and my mind just explodes. I'm like, what on earth is this me? Like, you have so many statistics. It is insane. And this is sometimes where people get, like, creeped out with marketing metrics. Because you can see when people are on your site. You can see where they are. You can see where they came from. It is crazy. Um, and then last thing is Uptime Robot. It's good to know when your site is down, but a lot of times, if you, you know, you're running on hosting, it's not something of your own fault. It's just something down. It's just good to know so you can freak out and do a dance and hope that it fixes itself. Or it might be something that broke uh, when updating. Uh, very rarely happens at this point, I'd say, but it's possible. Uh, it's a free service for one alert. Monitors every five minutes. Send you an email. Can send you a direct message on Twitter, even. My phone blows up if the site goes down. It's crazy. It's kind of fun, though. Um, last thing, just like a bonus, is that there's a ton of different like e-commerce plugins you can use to sell merch on your site really easy. WooCommerce is a great one. Just a simple PayPal buy button is great, too. So all kinds of really great um, ways to add a little extra revenue to your site rather than ads, because they're going to you know, you have a good following. They're going to like your your stuff, and they're going to probably want to support you, and it's a great way to do it. Uh, so thank you, guys. Uh, appreciate you coming. I hope you enjoyed.